Signal gasoline. Signal, the new gasoline you can prove is superior. The Signal Oil Company and your neighborhood signal dealer bring you another curious story by The Whistler. Tonight, sing a song of murder. And I know many things, for I walk by night. I know many strange tales hidden in the hearts of men and women who have stepped into the shadows. Yes, I know the nameless terrors of which they dare not speak. Success is a curious thing. Sometimes it comes very slowly, the result of a lifetime of dull drudgery. And sometimes it comes quickly, almost overnight. It was that way with Bill Randall. The fact that he was the most popular singer in the country wasn't as amazing as how quickly it had happened. Less than a year, and he was on top. His voice was as much a part of the average teenager's life as her bobby socks. Everybody was very happy about it. Everybody, that is, except Bill Randall. Bill wasn't happy at all. And after his broadcast one night, as he was taking his manager home, he told him why. Show went pretty well, Bill, but I thought you were going to run over a little. Now, you got to learn to judge times better. Why don't you get in the habit of time in everything you do? That way you Look, probably... Look, Gordon, I didn't offer to take you home to hear a lecture. I could be doing other things, you know. Yeah, yeah, I know, Romeo. You and your swooning dames. But I didn't ask for the lift. Diana got to pick me up. I want to talk to you. So you want to talk to me. Hey, hey, better slow down a little. They keep this highway pretty well patrolled. That's better. Keep it at 35 and they'll never bother you. That way we ought to get out to my place about uh, 10 minutes to 10 anyway. <laughs> but you do drive the local bus? No, I just timed it. At 35 miles per hour, it takes just 36 minutes over the highway. You see, that's what I mean about timing things. That's what you ought to do. Gordon, what I want to talk to you about is... You can switch on your country beam now. Let me do the driving, will you? Frank, that contract of ours... Yeah, what about it? I'd like to buy it back. (laughs) Not a chance, Golden Voice. I'm getting pretty sick of getting hooked. I'm willing to give you 10,000 for it. (laughs) Don't make me laugh. You're worth half a million to me. Yeah, that's just it. I'd like to start making some money for myself for a change. Now, why start that again? Well, I think it's a dirty deal, and I don't mind telling you. Dirty deal? <laughs> That's gratitude for you. Listen, hotshot, who were you before I got hold of you anyway? Just another punk singing in a joint. I'm the guy that built you up. I put you where you are. You? <laughs> My voice put me where I am. <laughs> so you got a voice. <laughs> Look, Swooner boy, there are lots of guys floating around with voices just as good as yours. The biggest asset you've got is a smart manager. I'm the guy that's made the difference between you and all the other two-bit troubadours in this town. You see those girls swooning all over the studios tonight? (laughs) I did that for you. Why shouldn't I get a cut? A cut? You call 40% of my earnings just a cut? No more than I should get, Randall. Anyway, why should you worry? You're making big money. You're making it to me. Time I pay you off and my agent and taxes, I haven't got anything left. And what happens when they don't like me anymore? I got to think of the future. Listen, pretty voice. I'll do the worrying if any needs to be done. You just keep on singing. That contract's got six more years to run. I know. I wrote it. By that time, I won't even have a voice left. My doctor told me. He said, I've got to take it easy. I've been overworking my throat. Uh, Ah, gargle. And I won't have any money left either. I'm not the one who's getting rich on this setup, you know. This isn't getting you anywhere, Randall. I'm not going to sell you your contract. I'm not going to tear it up. And I'm sure not going to give it to you. You signed it. I've got it. That's all there is to it. Yeah? Well, we'll see about that. Listen, Welcher. You start trying any smart stuff about backing out of that contract, and you're going to find yourself in trouble right up to that fat head of yours. You understand? Uh, here's a turn. I know. Hey, uh, stop in here at Gus's. I'll buy you some gas. Oh, do you think you can afford it? I've got a full tank. Now, don't start getting nasty. Gordon, that contract. I said forget it. Well, let's see. Uh, four minutes to ten. We're right on time. 
There's the cutoff. Will you quit that timing routine? What cutoff? Oh, it's the old road from town. Cuts off a little distance, but nobody uses it anymore. Now they get the highway. Come on in. No, thanks. Come on in. I've got some endorsements I want you to sign. Besides, you can have a drink to soothe those poor, overworked tonsils of yours. That isn't very funny. Come on, come on, come on. Oh, all right. I guess Diana stayed home tonight. Hello, Dad. Oh, hello, Bill. Hello, Diana. You have any luck finding a housekeeper today? No, I guess I have to carry on a while longer. Well, it's not going to hurt those delicate hands of yours. I got those endorsements in my desk, Randall. Come and take a look at them. <laughs> what are you going to do, make me sign them? Hmm? What do you mean? That gun in the drawer. Oh, <laughs> no, Glamour Boy. I don't think I have to use a gun to handle you. I just keep it because it's a good idea to have one, living way out here, you know. Well, here they are. Look them over. I'll go fix some drinks. Oh, I'll fix them, Dad. You stay here. Uh uh You mix drinks like a Sunday school teacher. I'll fix them. You stay and keep Golden Throat here company. Well, Diana, you trying to avoid me? Why, no, I... How about proving it, then? What do you mean? Bill, don't. What's the matter with wanting a kid? It's just that that's about all you ever seem to think about anymore. Well, you know anything better to think about? You think that just because you're where you are now, you can have anything you want. Well, it seems to work. You didn't used to be that way, Bill. Hmm. I didn't know what the score was. I remember how you used to be. We used to go for walks after the late floor show and buy popcorn and just talk. And you used to tell me the things you wanted to oh, do and... Oh, kid stuff. I wasn't dry behind the ears. And now you are? Oh, let's not dig up that stuff, Diana. How about dinner tomorrow night? I'm sorry, I'm busy. No, oh, how about the night after? I'm busy then, too. Sure you are. You're probably busy the night after that, too. You're always busy now when I want a date. It didn't used to be that way before I signed the contract. What do you mean? You know what I mean. Before I signed that contract with your dad, you were very willing to go out with me. Bill, that had nothing to do with Oh, it. no, no, nothing at all. You just used to see me to hear me sing because you liked me. You just told your dad about me out of kindness. And you just talked me into signing with him because you thought he'd do something for me. That happens to be the truth. I don't think Dad's been fair with you either, and I've told him so. You expect me to believe that. I'm not that big a dope, even if I was silly enough to think you loved me. I did, Bill, I did. You were sort of a nice guy in those days. But now, well, you've changed. <laughs> You're the one who's changed. I love you, Bill. But I'd love you a lot more if you signed your soul over to my father. Bill, don't say things like... Yeah, the truth hurts, doesn't it? It isn't the truth, and you know it. You've no right to talk like that. You've got that idea in your head, and you won't listen to anything else. You've gotten so bullheaded, so conceited that you just All can't All right, say... okay. It doesn't matter anymore, I guess. I'm hooked. But listen, Diana. Someday I'm going to get even, understand? Get out of here! Remember... Someday I'm going to get even. Well, Bill, that wasn't exactly a tender love scene between you and Diana, was it? Those things she said about you, how you changed, how conceited you were, they didn't set very well, did they? They made you pretty angry. You told her you were hooked. It looks as if you were right. The juicy offers flooding in don't make you feel any better about it either, do they? They just put more pressure on you, make you realize you've got to figure a way out of that contract. Then your throat starts bothering you again. So you go to see your doctor. I'm afraid I have some bad news for you, Mr. Randall. Yeah? What is it, Doc? You've got to quit singing for a while. Oh. Well, I'll take a week off. Mm, it'll have to be a lot longer than that. You'll have to quit for at least a year. A year? Oh, I can't do that. You'd better. If you don't... If I don't? Your voice won't last another six months. Six months. That's what the doctor said, Bill. Six months. Then you'll be all washed up, no voice left. And the money you've got won't even pay your debts. You know you've got to think of something. The pressure's building up, Bill. You've got to find a way to break that contract. The next day, you go to see your lawyer. You figure maybe he can help you. And he does, without knowing it. 
As you sit listening to him, an idea starts coming to you. No, Bill, I've been over that contract a dozen times. There isn't a loophole in it. It's airtight. Look, Steve, suppose I try to prove that I didn't realize what I was signing. Oh, no, no, I'm afraid not. You did know what you were signing, and you could never prove you didn't. You just didn't realize it was going to mean so much money. No, you might as well give up and serve out that six years, because as long as he's alive and kicking, he's never going to let you out of it. Yeah. As a matter of fact, even if Gordon should die, his share would go to his daughter. He's seen to that. Yeah. So they're both holding the whip hand over you, Bill, both of them. Yeah, I'd have to get rid of both of them. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm glad you still have a sense of humor. <laughs> yeah. Well, Steve, I'll be running along. Thanks for everything. I'm sorry I couldn't help you any. Let's get together soon for a little golf, huh? Okay. So long. So long, Bill. Yeah. Yeah, I've got to get rid of both of them. It was just last Monday on The Whistler that Signal Oil Company first announced new post-war Signal gasoline. Yet in that short week, thousands of Western drivers have made a wonderful discovery. A discovery of thrilling new performance they never dreamed was built into their cars. For new signal isn't just another gasoline, not just pre-war quality, not just an improvement on old-style gasoline, but an entirely new type super fuel that embodies in one giant stride the amazing advances of wartime chemistry. Yes, new signal is the new gasoline you can actually prove is superior. Prove it in four ways. One, with quicker starting the moment you touch the button. Two, faster pickup. You actually feel it. Three, higher anti-knock. Just listen to that old motor purr, even on steepest hills. And four, you'll find you go farther than ever with new signal. Because you'll be shifting less, enjoying more economical high-gear miles. Really, now, wouldn't you like to discover just how much fun driving can be? The way to do that, you know, is to drive into one of the friendly stations displaying signals, familiar yellow and black circle sign. And say, fill her up with new signal gasoline. And now, back to the whistler. Well, Bill Randall, if you want to break that contract with Frank Gordon, you've got to get rid of both him and his daughter, Diana. That's the only way out, isn't it? You've made up your mind to that. But you know you need a plan, Bill, and you need an alibi. Not too much of an alibi, just enough. After your show that night, waiting for your appointment with Gordon, you're thinking about it. The plan is starting to come to you. Bill late. Look, I'm not in the mood for any cracks. It wasn't a crack. What's eating you? Diana. What's the matter with Diana? Ah, that little dope, I ought to knock some sense into her. Why, what'd she do? Oh, I cut down her allowance for running the house and didn't tell her so one of her checks bounced. She got all upset about it and we had a big scene. So you had a big scene? Yeah, but it was in front of a lot of people we had at the house. I lost my temper and slapped her. She told me she hated me and went to her room. In front of all those people? Oh, that's too bad. Well, what do you want to see me about? You know what I want to see you about. There's endorsements. You stormed out of the house without signing them. Yeah, so I did. Now I've got to come traipsing around to give them to you. Looks like I have to plan everything for everybody. And well, here they are, little boy. Maybe you can quit parting long enough to put the famous name on the dotted line. Hurry it up, too. I'm it costing me good money here. You know, get off the dime. I'm going to sign them. Going. It's about time, prima donna. Here. Well, you almost lost your temper again, didn't you, Bill? You almost said something else. You've got to watch that. But the plan's beginning to take shape in your mind. That scene between Gordon and Diana in front of all those people. You can use that, can't you, Bill? That'll fit in very well. And what was that that Gordon said about having to plan everything? Why not let him plan this too, Bill? You start remembering things he's told you, things you can use. It takes 36 minutes to Gordon's house over the highway, remember that? And there's a cutoff. And that gun in his drawer, you can use those things, Bill, all of them. 
Maybe it'd be a good idea for you to find the shortcut. So one day you drive out that way and locate it. It's a nice deserted road and you time the trip. You can go as fast as you want on the shortcut. Fast enough to make it in 18 minutes. 18 from 36 leaves 18, doesn't it, Bill? 18 minutes to kill Gordon and get up to the gas station on the corner so it'll look as if you came over the highway all the way. That's all the alibi you want, isn't it, Bill? Just enough. Now all you need is the right night. Hello? Hello, Diana. Oh. You want to speak to Dad? No, you. Look, Bill, I thought we'd settled all that. I don't see why you keep calling up every night for a date. I... I've told you there's no... But, Diana, I want to see you, to tell you you that I... You told me enough the other night. I don't think there's anything more to say, and I wish you'd stop calling. Suppose you're busy tonight. Yes, I am. Anybody I know? That's another thing I wish you'd stop asking. It doesn't happen to be any of your business. No, I just want to know who the lucky guy is. It isn't a guy. I happen to be going over to Dorothy King's house for the evening. Is that all right with you? Yeah, sure. Have a good time. Thank you. Goodbye. Well, say, Diana. Yes? As long as you won't go out with me, I might as well take care of some business tonight. Would you tell your dad I'll be out around 10 to talk over some things? I'll tell him. Thanks, Diana. Bye. Goodbye. Dorothy King's, huh? That's three miles the other side of Gordon's. Just right. Okay, tonight's the night. Well, that's about all for this broadcast, folks. This is Bill Randall thanking you for listening and asking you to be around same time tomorrow night. Is it a date? Yes, be with us tomorrow night, same time, same station, for another edition of Songs by Bill Randall. And don't forget, this is National Safety Week. Drive safely and save a life. It may be yours. This is Bill Randall saying good night. <laughs> You duck the autograph kids and you're out of the studio now, hurrying toward your car. You knocked them dead again tonight, didn't you, Bill? But you're not thinking about that now. All you're thinking about is your car waiting for you. And your time schedule for the next 45 minutes. It's all time, Bill. Time to the minute. And here's your car. Hi. Are you Bill Randall? Well, yes, officer. Is your car... Uh, yes, it is. Well, what's the trouble? I'd like to check your brakes. This is National Safety Week, you know. We're checking cars. Oh. oh, well, officer, would you mind if I got it down the road away? I've got an appointment in that direction, and I don't want to be late. Uh, well, I guess okay. Only don't forget to do it. You'll probably be stopped anyway. Uh, thanks, officer. I'll take care of it. That gave you a start, didn't it, Bill? Seeing that cop standing beside your car. For a single panicky moment, you thought he might know what you're going to do. But he couldn't know that, Bill. He just wanted to tell you it's National Safety Week. That's a laugh, isn't it? It's not exactly going to be National Safety Week for Gordon, is it? But you're late now. He cost you two valuable minutes, and you can't afford that. If you're going to stay on schedule, you've got to hurry, Bill. You've got to hurry. You're on the back road now, speeding up. The minutes are sliding by. 10, 11, faster down the back road. 13, 14, your foot's pushing the pedal to the floor. 16, 17, the car's wide open. You're going to make it, Bill. 18, 19, and you're there, around the bend from Gordon. You're almost on schedule now, Bill, but you've still got to hurry. Say, what's the... Bill, what's the matter? Quick, Frank, your gun. Well, what's the trouble? Someone's following me. Following you? Yeah, quick, give me your gun. Oh, okay, it's right in here. I'll get it. <laughs> Here, here it is. Now, where is he? Thank you, Frank. Well, there it is. Don't just stand there, stupid. I thought someone was after you. No, Gordon. Someone's after you. Hey, what is this? Put down that gun. Not just yet, Gordon. Have you gone crazy? Give me that Don't gun. Don't move. No, Gordon, I haven't gone crazy. I was crazy to sign that contract, but I'm not anymore. Well, you're blowing your top. I'm going to break that contract, Gordon. And I'm going to use your gun to do it. Don't be a fool. You can't get away with it. They'll find you. I don't think so, Gordon. 
They'll be too busy pinning it on someone else. Well, Randall, uh, say, maybe we better talk a little. Shut maybe... up. They've talked enough. I'll get on that phone and call Diana. Diana, I, I don't know where she is. Oh, quit stalling. You know she's at Dorothy King's. I'll pick up that phone and dial Crescent 2417. Tell her to come home immediately. It's an emergency. And nothing more. Do you understand? Yeah, okay, okay. Hello? I'd like to talk to Diana, please. Well, this is her father. Now, for the last time, Bill, will Shut you... Shut up! Hello, Diana? Uh, listen, baby, uh, come home right away. It's an emergency. She ought to make it in about five minutes, huh? Yeah, I guess so. Well, that gives you about 30 seconds more to live. Now, Randall, listen. You know, Gordon, you used to tell me I couldn't judge time, didn't you? <laughs> well, I've gotten better. This is time to the minute. But, Bill, for pity's sake... You might you... be interested in knowing just how well it is timed. Diana's going to get here in a few minutes, and a little after that, the cops are going to walk in and find her standing over your dead body. I think they'll jump at the obvious conclusion. Diana, why... You're not going to drag you're her into the... quite the fond parent all of a sudden, aren't you? Yes, I'm going to drag her into it. And when the cops hear about that scene between the two of you the other day, and when I show them something I've got in my pocket, I don't think they'll have much trouble establishing a motive for her. <laughs> Pretty neat, don't you think? No, Bill, no. Now, listen, please. Let, let, let's talk this over, huh? You, you... Yes, won't... Gordon. Don't, no. Yes. No, God! Ah! You've done it, Bill. There he is, and you're not even nervous. Your plan has worked beautifully so far. It's 20 to 10, Bill. That gives you five minutes to make a phone call and get up to the service station on the corner. Hello, police. This is Frank Gordon at 21 Denning Lane. Come over right away. You're through now, Bill, except for the fingerprints. Don't forget to wipe them off the gun and phone and door. Now you're ready. Out the door, back to the car, get it started. Down the back road, turn to the right. Down the side road toward the highway, around the block, and into the service station on the corner. You made it, Bill. Yes, sir? Uh, five of the regular. You betcha. Joe? Five regular. A little cooler tonight, huh? What? Oh, yeah, it is. Hey, mister, did you know your taillight's out? No, I didn't. I'll have it fixed. Yeah, but let me do it now. It only takes a minute to put in a new bulb. Well, I don't know whether I've got time. I've got an appointment. Oh. Uh, what time is it? Let's see. Uh, yeah, about ten minutes of ten. Ten of ten. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, okay. Put it in. Hey, just take a minute. I've got the bulbs right here. Just laid in a new supply. This is National Safety Week, you know. Cops checking for things like this. Taillights, brakes, and driver's licenses. Yeah, well, that's what I hear. Good thing, too. Helps cut down the number of accidents. Can't be too careful, you know. Yeah, that's right. Can't be too careful. Yeah, well, there it is. Well, very simple. Well, water okay? Yeah. How much do I owe you? Ninety cents. Here's a buck. Keep the dime. Thanks. Hope you're not late for your appointment. I don't think I'll be. Oh. Come in. You're Mr. Randall? Yeah, officer. What's happened? I was told you were expected. What's the ma Diana. Oh, Bill, dead. What? <laughs> Mr. Gordon is dead. Dead? Oh, wh how? What happened? He was murdered. Murdered? Why are you looking at me like that? I didn't... Oh, no, no, Diana. Of course you didn't. Mr. Randall, we'd like to ask you a couple of questions. Why, well, Sure. You had a 10 o'clock appointment with Mr. Gordon? Yes. Did you see him earlier? Why, no. Did you talk to him over the phone? Not today. What was your appointment about? Why, it was just some business. What kind of business? Well, uh, I'd rather not say. It, it might look Let's like... Let's have it, Randall. Well, all right. It was about this agreement I have here. Gordon was going to sell me his interest in my contract. This was the agreement. I was going to give him $10,000. Here's the check. What? Well, he said he told you, Diana. I asked him especially because... Well, because you stood to inherit your father's interest in my contract if anything happened to him. That's why I didn't want to mention this business. You know, it might look like she... Well, uh, like... I see. 
You've been a big help to us, Mr. Randall. Oh, but I'm sure you can account for Diana's whereabouts throughout the evening, officer. Yes, we can. We know where she was a little after the time Gordon was murdered. She was right in this room. And with what you've told us, I'd say the case was just about wound up. <laughs> The Whistler will return in just a moment with the strange ending to tonight's story. Meantime, here's a special message for you folks from Missouri, the Show Me State, or any of the rest of you who like proof. For I want to show you just why it is that New Signal is so superior to old-style gasolines. Why New Signal is actually an entirely new type, super fuel. You see, gasoline is composed of countless different hydrocarbon molecules. In pre-war gasolines, the molecules were left just as nature made them. But under the impetus of war, chemists found how to take the molecules themselves apart. Actually, how to rearrange the atoms within the molecules. The result is the thrilling, amazing power of Signal's new gasoline, bringing you performance so immediately apparent you can feel it, see it, hear it. Yet in new Signal, you enjoy this premium performance at no extra cost. Now... If you have that Missouri trait, I can hear you say, you gotta show me. And that's just what we want to do. Next time, fill up with new signal. Let a tank full of this new super fuel show you in your own car that new signal is the new gasoline you can prove is superior. And now, back to the whistler. Yes, Bill, the case is just about wound up. That's what the officer said, and now you're trying not to smile. It looks as if your plan worked perfectly, doesn't it? But the officer's still talking, Bill. Yes. Maybe you better pay attention to what he's saying. We know where Miss Gordon was, because she picked me up on her way over here and brought me with her. She... There are lots of us on the highway tonight. It's National Safety Week, you know. You see, that telephone call she got from her father sort of aroused her suspicions. She hadn't told him where she was going tonight. As a matter of fact, you were the only one who knew. Me? Anyway, when we got here together and discovered the body, and I checked up with the people Miss Gordon had been with, I knew she couldn't very well have done it. But I don't... Randall, can you account for your whereabouts? Why, yes. Yes, I can. I left the studio right after my show at 9.15, drove out here on the highway, stopped for gas at the corner... I think I got there about 10 of 10. I see. Anything unusual happen on the highway? I know. I just drove along at my usual speed. That's very interesting, Randall. Very interesting. I told you it was National Safety Week. So happens we've been stopping everyone on the highway since 8 tonight, checking driver's licenses. I'm sure we'd have stopped you if you'd been on the highway. I think you'd better come with us. Next Monday at 9 o'clock, The Whistler will bring you another strange tale. The Whistler is broadcast for your entertainment by the marketers of Signal Gasoline and Motor Oil and fine quality automotive accessories and by your neighborhood Signal dealer. This program, directed by George W. Allen, with tonight's story by Robert Reif, music by Wilbur Hatch, is transmitted to our troops overseas by the Armed Forces Radio Service. This is Marvin Miller speaking and suggesting that you try New Signal. The new gasoline you can prove is superior. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs>